All right, this is day two of engine pulling. We're getting the engine out of the Acura. Uh, this is the last time this car will be powered by a Honda engine. Uh, this engine is going to go to somebody. Not sure who yet, but uh, still a good engine. All right, it was uh, it was an experience that uh, not all Integras have VTEC. I was, uh, when I first got this, I was like, all right, let's time to see what all the uh, fuss is about and come to find out it's a non-VTEC motor. So I was quite disappointed. Um, but yeah, it's still a good engine, still runs, still works. I mean, I actually dailyed it for like a week or two while two of my cars were down. Um, but yeah, it's the last time it'll be running uh, in this car. So we're in the back here, uh, checking out the, the scenery. Um, I don't see any red flags already. I mean, people have made mid-engine mid integras before. I know it could be done. Um, that being said, as far as the overall length, a V6 is still actually going to be shorter than this VR. But yeah, motor's going to sit, bam, right there. We're going to we have a roll cage. It's currently being bent. Uh, SOW race cars of Pennsylvania. I'll pick that up next weekend because once I cut this out. Um, like stuff like this, uh, the car will be extremely loose. Um, so it, I, I, I actually need basically, it would be in my best interest to reinforce the chassis uh, with the roll cage. The roll cage is going to be the firewall, the roll cage is going to be the motor mount, uh, like mounting points, and then add rigidity to the car. So it's it's solving a lot of problems for me, and you know, roll cage. Um, but so CRV, CRV front knuckle in the front, it should just take a little bit of modification. Uh, to fit in there properly. If I have to make a custom upper control arm, I will. Um, but I, I don't think I will. No, well, I'll, I'll know once I get it. But that gives me five lug up front. In the back, I'm actually going to retain uh, the Integra the uh, Integra trailing arm, and we're going to use a Nissan Maxima wheel bearing. Um, the lug pattern is the same, five by one fourteen point three. Um, it should bolt on with a little bit of work to the back wheel. And that gives me my factory rear trailing arm with five lug in the back and most importantly, a very large axle. Um, the Honda guys go all wheel drive, which is great. Um, if you're only sending like 20 or 50% of your power to the back, um, but this is sending all the power to the back. Um, the rear axle, there's no way the rear axles on the CRV would take that hit. Um, we're gonna, I'm putting the VR in here and A for a little bit, but the plan is to then supercharge it. Um, like 250 maybe 300 horsepower and there's just no way the crv axles would hold up to that um as like the sole like source of power uh so yeah hopefully i can hopefully i can do it um yeah this, this all gets cut out um i might have to move things around but hey that's that's a project for next week and i pulled two motors and stripped down a car this weekend so i got i got a lot done Another glorious winter Maryland day. It is starting to snow a little bit. I don't know if you can actually pick that up. But um, on task for this weekend, despite all this, is to get this roll cage in this car. Um, it's kind of like step one. I don't want to cut out the floor until I put this cage in. Uh, because the second I cut out this floor, like the whole rear loses uh, integrity. 
So by putting the cage in first, then cutting it, it should stay like where it is as far as like the chassis, it shouldn't bend or anything. Um, this isn't my first cage I've ever put in. I did get it from the same company. Um, s and race cars, s and Performance. Um, they're up in Pennsylvania, um, which is kind of convenient because it's only like a two hour drive um, instead of like $150 shipping because it's not light. Um, but the turnaround was pretty quick. It was about 10 days um, and I picked it up uh, last night. Like I said, this isn't my first time building a cage. Uh, same company. Um, they made this and then I kind of modified it for my needs. Um, this is like a 10 or 12, I don't know, it depends how you count it. Um, those posts go to the subframe down below, so the subframe itself is tied into the cage. Uh, the car is unbelievably stiff. Um, but this was like my first attempt at making a cage, uh, like about five years ago. Um, but I was very happy with the fit and finish, so I went with them again. I'm getting this main hoop in here. Uh, since it's a hatchback, which is great, you can just kind of stick it in the back. I don't actually need to use the method I had to do for the BMW. Um, I could just load it from the back. Uh, so I don't need to actually drill holes in the floor. We're just going to, I did a rough measurement. We're gonna take about an inch all, inch and a half off this. Um, it probably won't be touching the headliner, but that's fine. Um, I'd like to keep the headliner in here. A, it looks, it's still intact. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, if you could even see it. <laughs> um, and we're retaining the uh, factory uh, seat belt, so yeah, right now I'm just getting my measurements done. We're gonna go ahead and hack the little inch and a half off this, set it up, and then um, put the plates in there, and then we should be good to uh, at least tack weld this in, and then get the measurements on the other stuff. Um, I do need to remeasure everything, make sure it actually fits. Um, I need to push the cage as far out as possible because there's gonna be an engine here. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get to that. All right, so I pushed the car in the garage. I was gonna do the grinding outside, but I also don't wanna be that neighbor. Um, so we push it inside. Good thing it like, wastes nothing right now. Um, we have to cut out the whole floor. Um, I've seen, I did something I usually don't do ever on builds, and I looked at what someone else has done. I saw that they retained where this was. I saw some of the more custom ones where they had, had moved it. Um, but for my build, I would like to retain where this is to minimize fabrication. Um, so these can stay there and we're just going to cut it just maximum amount of space while keeping the fenders in there. Um, now the other builds I've seen, they're obviously, I guess, I don't know the word for it, more high end. They're people that like have their own shops. I don't. Um, so I would like to be able to install the engine from the top. All the other builds I've seen, they're using like a lift, obviously, to lift the whole car off the engine and then put it back down. I don't really have that ability, um, nor do I kind of almost want it. Um, I prefer something where I can get the engine in on a driveway. It's anywhere I need to. I really can't have, I, I literally can't um, have it where the engine is installed from the bottom. So it is what it is. But yeah, we're about to cut all this stuff out. <laughs> 